the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in today's second reading, St. Paul asks us, what can separate us from the love of Christ? And he lists all sorts of external things, and he, he knows that none of them can separate us from the love of Christ. We might adapt it to pandemic or doubts or fears or whatever, right? Uh, but we know that the things that we do that are internal to us can separate us from Christ and we need his mercy. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain 
and eat. Come, without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor death or any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew. 
When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. I was on YouTube one day, and as anybody who has used YouTube for any length of time knows, they've always got another recommended video for you uh, after the one you're done watching, the one you went there to watch. And Father Jack and I have talked many times about how you're still there hours later because there's always another recommended video. But um, there was uh, one of the recommended videos that was there was the most satisfying video you'll ever see. And uh, what it was is it was things like dominoes falling, things that were very rhythmic, they had a great pattern to them, things like a well-oiled machine working very smoothly and efficiently, Uh, sometimes things that were slightly out of place being put perfectly into place, fitting just so, kind of uh, satisfying the, the OCD urge for many people, right? And after about, I don't know, five or seven minutes, the video concluded. What's interesting about this, though, It said it's the most satisfying video. There's a whole bunch of videos, actually, that claim to be the most satisfying video, which kind of tells you that maybe it's not as satisfying as we thought, right? Because if it was the most satisfying video ever, you wouldn't need any of the other ones. You'd have the most satisfying one, and that would satisfy you. But we know this from our experience, that satisfaction, being satisfied, is elusive, right? It's elusive. It's not as attainable as we would like it to be. We would like to be able to have uh, one serving of everything at a meal or a handful of a snack and be satisfied, right? But we can never eat just one, right? There's always more Oreos, there's always more chips, whatever, right? There's always seconds. Even sometimes when all the food is gone, we enjoyed it so much that we want more, even though we have enough to sustain us, right? Uh, It's true, possessions as well. I was just uh, reading Uh, a post by someone who uh, he does a hobby, but it's an outdoor hobby and he couldn't do it in bad weather. So he said, I'm going to go on uh, the online catalog and and see what what I can't live without, right? Now he has all sorts of things for this hobby, but the point is it's never enough, right? We're never satisfied. There's always something else that could come along that we might need or think that we need. This can be true with all sorts of things, right? I think it's even true, especially in these days, with information and with the news, because of some of the uncertainty that comes with the pandemic and other things, uh, we want to find more certainty. We want to find something that is more satisfying, a better explanation. We keep looking and we keep reading more articles and watching more things on the news about it, but it's elusive. And sometimes I think we'd be better off setting it aside for a week or so rather than letting it whip us up because it never ends up satisfying us the way we would like. This is reflected in this first reading from the prophet Isaiah today. It's one of my favorite passages from the book of the prophet Isaiah uh, where 
God speaking through Isaiah acknowledges that we have trouble, we cannot satisfy ourselves, right? God says through Isaiah, why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? But what God is offering through Isaiah is something different, right? He's offering something that satisfies. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. Come, receive grain and eat. And not just that God can offer something that will satisfy, but that first reading from Isaiah talks about how he offers it without cost, without payment. We spend all sorts of money or an effort trying to find things that satisfy, but God provides the things that truly satisfy without paying and without cost. And if we think about this, and we think about this in the light of our readings, we see that uh, all of this is pointing towards the Eucharist. But I think it's, it's good to, to take a step back and look at how it gets us there, especially from this reading from Isaiah, this first reading. It mentions at the end that God will renew with them the everlasting covenant. Now, when we hear that again, our minds probably go to the Eucharist because we hear the Eucharist referred to in that way in the prayers of the Mass. But remember, at the time of Isaiah, they wouldn't have had that uh, connotation. It wouldn't have come to people's minds that way. The Eucharist hadn't been instituted yet. And so I was reading something this week that spoke about what that would have sparked in their minds. What would an everlasting covenant have meant to them? And another place, perhaps maybe the only place, I'm not sure, where this, this phrase comes up, everlasting covenant, is referring to the offering of the bread of presence. So going back to Aaron, Moses' brother, the first priest of the Old Covenant, uh, they were instructed by God to offer this bread of the presence. So in the tabernacle, kind of the portable temple that they had in the desert as they were traveling uh, and even at, when they got to Israel, and then later in the temple, they had this offering of the bread of presence. They set out every week loaves of bread, and actually, interestingly, they set them out with wine, right? And this was the bread of the presence. It was the bread that was an offering in the presence of God. And it was referred to as an everlasting covenant. This is significant because we see that Jesus, of course, comes to fulfill the old covenant with the new covenant. And we see this happening, for instance, even though it's not mentioned specifically in the gospel with the multiplication of the loaves, right? So Jesus isn't the only person to multiply loaves and food. Other prophets like Elisha did it. Uh, he multiplied, um, I think, 20 loaves for 100 people, and there were fragments left over. And so Jesus is fulfilling it uh, by doing so much more. He's taking less food, just five loaves and two fish, and he's multiplying them for far more people, and there's still some left over and more left over than the prophets, right? So we see that the Lord is fulfilling all of these types of the old covenant, and he fulfills this offering of the bread of the presence as well. Again, going back to the Mass, we hear about it referred to as the new and everlasting covenant, the fulfilled everlasting covenant. So God gives us this bread and wine, right? Uh, and it's not just bread and wine that is set in the presence of God, near where God dwells in the temple, right? This bread and wine of the new and everlasting covenant, it is the presence of God. It becomes the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. And just as they set it out every week, they refreshed it every week, so too we do. And actually, again, like the new covenant would indicate more often than that, even every day, right? This bread is renewed for us. It is multiplied for us, so to speak, as, uh, as we see in the gospel today. And so we see that this is what God offers us that will satisfy us. It has to be this, because our longing in a certain sense, as we were reflecting on at the beginning, is infinite. The only thing that can satisfy our longing is something that is infinite. And the only thing that is infinite, the only one that is infinite, is God himself. And so the reason he invites us to come, to come to the bread that he gives, which is not just bread anymore, but he himself, is because that is what satisfies. And just like Isaiah says, God offers it to us without us having to somehow uh, find a way to repay him for it or, or compensate him for it. Now, does this 
always satisfy each individual human particular need? Uh, does it always make it so that we don't hunger for physical food, or does it always satisfy the various longings of our, of our hearts? Uh, not, not maybe the specific things. It might not make it so that we don't need to eat physical food, for instance. That's happened in certain rare occasions with saints. But even though it does not fulfill all of those particular needs and satisfy them, maybe in the way that we want to, what God is saying here is that this satisfies a deeper need and a deeper longing, the deep and underlying desire of our heart. The multiplication of the loaves and fish, it hints at the abundance that God can indeed provide enough to satisfy us. And so today we trust as we come into his presence, as we celebrate this Mass, that as he did through Isaiah, God is still inviting us to come to him for what satisfies and still setting out for us the bread of the new and everlasting covenant. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's love is made visible in Christ Jesus, and the food of the Eucharist is the greatest gift of his love. Let us pray to the Lord who feeds us and answers all our needs. For the bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be sustained in their daily ministry of the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not have enough to eat, those who are starving in various places in the world, that those who work to, to redress those causes of hunger may be sustained in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for men, women, and children who are threatened or attacked or persecuted because of their faith, for perseverance and strength, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for farmers and for all who produce and prepare and serve the food that we eat and that God would grant favorable weather for the crops this year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sick and suffering, and uh, that God would grant healing to them, especially those ill with COVID-19, that he would grant protection to those who care for them and all people, and that he would end the spread of the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for those who have died and gone before us in faith, they may be welcomed into God's presence in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Most bountiful Father, grant the favors we seek as we renew the covenant and look forward to the feast of the kingdom in the celebration of this Eucharistic sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As you're being seated, just a reminder that rather than have the ushers go through the congregation at this time, we just have a basket placed in the center of church. And if you've brought an offering, you can simply drop it there as you leave church today. You can also continue to drop offerings in the mail or at the church office. Uh, and there's our virtual collection basket as well on our website. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, name for our good and good of all souls. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and Andrew, his assistant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of, e of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar in heaven, so that in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Accompany with your constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that Holy Communion will be distributed immediately following Mass. I'll go and get my mask and sanitize my hands, and then I'll come to you in your pews, starting from the back and working my way to the front. It's good to see so many of you here. Uh, you may have seen the email during the week uh, reminding you of uh, the fact that we have the sign-up for weekend mass. Uh, the sign-up is not uh, at this point because we need to limit the number of people that are there, but just so that we can be prepared to know how many people are coming. So we do ask if you're able to, to continue to sign up online. It comes in our, our weekly email newsletter if you get that. It's also um, on our website, uh, at on the link for Sunday Mass, and you can always call Elizabeth as well to RSVP if uh, you don't have access to the, the internet or, or our website. Um, but again, this just helps us to be prepared. You notice that there are some chairs set up back there. We have ways of uh, adding more, more space and, uh, and making sure that uh, we still maintain the distancing, but we're still well within the, the Minnesota Department of Health and the CDC guidelines. So just know that. One of the things that we are, uh, that was mentioned in the email is that uh, some people I noticed were nervous to come because it was just maybe one in the household or only one person that would be coming and they didn't want to take up a whole pew uh, away from maybe a family or someone like that. And obviously as time went on we realized that most if maybe not all of our pews are long enough that people who are just one to a party so to speak can sit on opposite ends of the same pew and still have plenty of space uh, between them. So just a reminder that you can do that as well uh, if you're coming just on your own. You can have one person on each end of the pew and then that doesn't have that effect of taking away uh, a pew from, from other people. So do not worry about that at all. So just wanted to call attention to some of those things. Uh, but once again, it's good to see you all. I miss being able to, to chat with you after Mass, but uh, we, uh, we continue to uh, make the sacrifices that we need to so that we can come and receive the Lord in the Eucharist. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.